Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. This is part 472 of my rewiring project on my 1968 Pontiac Le Mans. Actually, it's part number six. I'll have the other videos listed down below in the description. Uh, but in my last video, what I did was I got started on the interior. Got the headlight switch done, the turn signal switch, the ignition switch, a couple of other little things. But I still need to do the neutral safety switch, reverse switch, and the instrument cluster. So let's get to it. Ah, enjoying the rains from Hurricane Helene. So here's where we are. Um, I've taken the instrument panel out. Got a separate video, uh, and I'll link it in the description of how to remove the uh, instrument cluster in your 68. Le Mans, Tempest, GTO, Beaumont, whatever you got. So this is what's going on now. I've got access to everything. The cool thing is, is now I can take out all my old cabling that was kind of in the way. Did notice it was attached to the instrument panel itself to keep it up there. So the only way I was going to get this old stuff out is if I had that out. So that's out. Um, I've got my wires ready here that come over for my neutral safety switch and the backup lights. And I have picked up a new neutral safety switch. And as I can see here, the wiring is running down along through here and back up. Um, the issue that I do have is my purple wire. Um, according to Painless, I'm supposed to run that to my neutral safety switch, cut it off and whatever's left, then runs to my ignition switch. Uh, the problem is uh, this is all I have left. <laughs> so it's really gonna just be able to run to the neutral safety switch. And I've got a red wire that I will then use. It's a little bit thicker gauge, um, but I think I can live with it. I don't wanna go with a smaller gauge. It's a larger gauge. But I'll use this to run to my ignition and like I said this will be the backup lights so that'll be the first thing on our list the other thing is now that I've got the instrument panel out this is what plugs into the back of the instrument panel there are 12 slots one is empty and what I've done is map out all of the original factory wiring so it's got the same one through six seven through twelve and this has you can see hopefully this is seven through twelve one it's numbered one through six so i know pretty much that where everything's going to go you know i know that there's the power button left turn instrument lights fuel sending unit that sort of thing so they're all marked off here the colors do not necessarily match up with the colors in the painless uh, wiring. But like I said, I know what will go where. Now here's my other big problem. The connectors that are in the uh, pins up here for the instrument panel. These are old style pins, so I know I can pretty much take all of these out, connect up all the right wires, plug them in, but I don't know if I can buy these. These are sort of arched and they can this this can only go in one way when you slide it in to make sure you don't have it backwards but i need to check and see if these pins are available if not i don't know what i'm going to do because the instrument panel has to only go in one way and it has to go in with this clip so what i may end up having to do is cut these wires and then splice all of the painless wires into that uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much my biggest difficulty at this point. The rest of the wiring are some accessory wires. Um, this is for the oil sending unit, water temp, fan, radio, and a couple that I'm not going to use because, again, TAC, um, uh, the idiot light for the water temp, the idiot light for the oil sending, that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to need these. Really only going to need these these wires here. The other issue that I've got, I've got a few little extra wiring bits that I'm gonna have to figure out. There is one wire that goes to this, 
which I believe just gives you the warning noise when your glove box is open. Um, there is a light bulb here on the dash pad. There was a light bulb that would illuminate this plastic piece here. So there's wiring up in here that goes to the light bulb that's in here. Um, I'm going to have to figure out a way to wire up the heater because that's not part of the uh, normal setup. But, you know, I, I'm and then, they, like I said, the radio wires that I can run. I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to actually install a real working radio. I think I'm going to do the radio in the glove box. I've done that before, way back when I had it in the 90s. I had a CD player in here. So I think what I'm going to do is see if I can put an old non-working radio in here and then run my radio wiring over there. I think before I start doing anything, I think what I need to do is get out all of this old wiring harness, get out all the old wires, and then I can kind of see where I've got room and then I can actually take you know a lot of my new wires and wrap them up. I've got the wires that I'm not going to use that again I can seal off and, and put up in here as well. That way I've got them in case I need them and they're up and out of the way and then we can tape everything off because we're starting to see the end of the interior section. Need to do a little bit of cutting. These two are to the heater. Okay. What on earth? Or these two. Ah, the door sensor. I actually have a new one of these. Um, so yeah, good to know. Got the wiring out and my old speaker. Speaker was up in here. I figure I don't want to come back in here, so I might actually put a nice decent speaker in here and run the uh, cables down. Got everything disconnected. Um, only thing I'm not sure of, Painless doesn't give a whole lot of detail on hooking up the heater. And there was this plug-in that's still there. There was another plug that was in up here, I think, somewhere. And then a light bulb that was up here to sort of light this up. So that's gonna be a little crazier to figure out. Now, it doesn't look like it, but I had to clean this a bit. It was just too nasty from just years and years of dust, debris, all that. But cleaned it out a little bit so it's not quite as crazy. I might even actually paint this while I've got it exposed. So I wouldn't have to tape off as much. We'll see. Okay, so for my neutral safety switch and reverse switch, I'm going to take off these ends and attach the new ones. It looks like it's running all the way down through there. And I have traced it up to this up here. So I can actually delete that. That must have plugged into the original harness, or which went into the uh, fuse box. So that's cool. I can kind of see where they were running things. So I've got my purple and two green wires taped together. Then what I did was I actually added the red wire that's going to return back up to my um, ignition switch. So the red is to consider this to be the purple, other purple wire. So uh, the other thing that I added was a thinner blue gauge wire to the whole thing. Now I did this because there is a light bulb down here and there was a ground here so i think what i'm going to do is this extra wire that i've got i'm going to attach that to the instrument panel lighting 
and I included that in this whole wrap so that I could feed it down in through the carpet. I basically taped it all up and I stopped using the good tape because I knew hopefully I'm going to be out to here by then. But that was so I could fish everything through in one shot. So, hope that makes sense. But I added an extra wire. I've got my return wire in there, my purple wire out, and my two greens out uh, for the uh, reverse switch are now all taped up together. Um, this tape is really hard to get off, by the way, so I tried not to tape it too far because I wasn't sure how far I needed to go. But anyway, it's just so I could fish it through the carpet. This carpet's going to get changed, but for now, like I said, I'm just trying to do the wiring and get this all taken care of. All right, I'm going to give myself a little bit of slack and there, I've got my wire all the way through. I got my wires run through. Everything was good, except that my purple wire was not long enough. So I got a 12 gauge black wire. I know some people are gonna hate that, but that's all I had in 12 gauge. Got it connected up and shrink wrapped it. So we should be good. Got a nice and tight uh, connection there. Um, hopefully everything will be fine. Park, reverse. Neutral. Yep, car moves. So, when I put the neutral safety switch on, it should be right in the middle. Down on that. Alright, so I've got my neutral safety switch reinstalled. And I just need to put the two green for the top switch the black and red for the bottom and then this is my for my light and I'll just need a ground to go from the one side of the light to down here. I've got my connectors in the old uh, little plastic housing container and it turns out that the side two are the backup switch and the top, the one that, that are on top of each other, those are the neutral safety switch wires. Okay, I've got my, what are supposed to be my purple wires uh, in here and they go into this section right down here. And that's it for my neutral safety switch and my reverse switch. The only thing I still have to do though is figure out a way to hook up the light bulb and because it lights up the uh, shift display and then I can put the console back on. Got my shift indicator cleaned up a little bit and got the light bulb back in and it really just had the one wire coming out of it. So I have a feeling it was grounded with the console and the console ground was right here. So all I really have to do is just connect these two and my shift indicator light will be on. So down here within the console there was a ground wire that went up to here and it connected to the screw that was going down into the floor pan. So yeah, that light will be taken care of once I get this all put back in. I don't want to do it yet because I still have to put my speaker in and the uh, heater harness. Now, the circuit board that's on the back of the dash is seemingly in good shape. One of the things that I do want to do is take a, a basically a pencil eraser, go along here and clean up all these little copper spots. And the pencil eraser, you just want to make sure you wipe all the dust and stuff off first. But the biggest problem I've got is this little buddy right here. This one has delaminated. What I picked up is, this is basically a double-sided electronics repair tape. It's the kind of thing you use for like a phone screen, iPad. It's a double-sided tape. Comes with tweezers and 
it's this stuff is like super super sticky and what I want to do is clean off this little area here and cut a piece off and use the tweezers see if I can't put that on there hold it down and still be able to use this circuit board since it's still in really good shape there's nothing that I can see that's broken or any any tears or any problems so that's pretty much my biggest concern right there So I've got two little pieces of tape on there. Let's see if I can get the tape backing off. I got one on. Oh, there we go. So I think I just need to see if I can, without the camera in my hand, flatten that out a little bit. And hopefully we're good. I don't know. I feel like I got it down a little too far. But, because it's farther down than the other two. But I think hopefully we'll be okay. If we're not, I don't know why. I put a little strip on the back of this to sort of hold it so that it doesn't move too much. Hopefully that'll be okay. All right, next thing I wanna do is use the pencil erasers to sort of go along through here and clean these up. So yeah, I'll go ahead and get all of the little copper bits. But I think all you really need to do is just, like I said, use that eraser, keep moving it around wipe it off a little bit and get all the copper cleaned up. Okay, hopefully you can see I've kind of got that one a little cleaned up and I kind of wanted to just give you an example. Again, this is what it looks like before cleaning. It's pretty dull. Um, there's a little bit of clearer copper, cleaner copper over here. That one's pretty, pretty rough still, but as you can see, clean it, um, use the eraser and then use a non-abrasive um, like I'm just using some soapy water and just kind of touching this up after I've got all that on so I'm not leaving any of the eraser stuff on there. But yeah, I'll just keep going. And then I'm gonna start with the bulbs. This one's kind of rough, but I believe it's this one, this one, and this one, which are the, uh, just sort of the illumination dash lights. The rest are like individual bulbs. Like I think this is for the turn signals, for example. Uh, so I'm going to be replacing these with the LED bulbs. The rest I'm going to go back with the traditional bulbs. Most of the ones in here are the 194s. And, um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and keep working on this to get it better. This is from Super Bright, and this is an LED bulb. And I'm going to do that just for my illumination. Not for the actual bulbs. This one is what's called a tower LED and supposedly puts off a lot of light in a couple different directions. I can leave the links down below, but this is what I want to use for um, the dash light itself. All right, so that one's installed. Like I said, I'm going to repeat it on this one and this one, and it will be these super bright LEDs. And then I'll use the traditionals on the others. Okay, actually I got that wrong. I'm gonna put this one up in here. This is, all right, I'm gonna put this one up in here. This one is the brake light. This one is the dash light. This one is the high beam indicator. This is the uh, other dash light. And then this is the final dash light here. This one down here is the temp light. And then this one is the generator, sort of alternator light. And the turn signal light. Yeah, oil light, gen light, temp light, and dash light. And this is the fuel gauge section. The uh, tachometer that should fit is now here. 
Let's give it a try and see how well it works out. This tack is supposed to be a perfect reproduction of the original. So I have a good feeling it will fit. It was not a perfect fit. Did have to trim a little bit of plastic off. And I had to sort of bend this down to get it to line up. But it's on there. There you go. Look at that. The other gauges look a little dimmer, of course. This glass is 50, or the plastic is 57 years old. But I've got a tack in my dash now for the first time. Got most of the old dash pad insulation out. And I'm going to install a little bit of a dynamite or kill mat or whatever it's called. <laughs> Not perfect, but it will do. Just need to get a roller in there and smooth it out as best as I can. Okay, so the kill mat is in. I really love this stuff. It does wonders. And got it all up in there nice and tight. And should be good to go. Okay, so here is the original with the old wiring hardness. And this is the new clip I just got. And actually, I'm not even sure if you can tell, but they, they, are, they are pretty much exactly the same. The one thing I even noticed is that this side is a little shorter than the bar on this side. This matches it exactly the same. Like this is a little higher, that's a little higher, that's a little shorter. You know, it's pretty much exactly the same. And it's got all of the correct clips. But as you can see, they're raised up a little bit so that they will slide down into that circuit board. It's from Ron Francis wiring and it is a it's called PC12 it's a printed circuit plug and terminals and there are 12 terminals or mine has 12 so it looks like yeah I'm gonna have to be exactly on because they give you exactly 12 again kind of want to make sure we've got all of our wires untangled from everything else for example these are the wires to my ignition switch these are the wires to my headlight switch I'm going to have a wiper switch wire in here somewhere, but I wanted to get everything up and out of the way. I can tape these up, um, but everything is, is all together here. I'm not going to use all of these. Some of these are for the coolant temperature, for the oil, light idiot light, for all of that. But again, I've got them all up out of the way. And then when I do reinstall this, I can put this in on top. This is att this attaches to the top of the instrument cluster and I'll be able to then attach that to the cluster and it can run along and then attach into the back of the cluster. And the rest of the wires that I'm not using I can safely secure up in here so that they are out of the way. Okay, this is for my instrument panel wiring. I did include the wiper switch just because I can drop it straight down to here which is where the wiper switch goes. And got everything all taped up and cut off. Now I just need to put my terminal on, terminals on and good to go. And I messed up. Um, the wiper motor wire actually should be run out to here. I don't have my motor on here now, but this is something I should have done way back on page 17. It said, hey, if you've got a GM firewall mounted motor, well, this wire is supposed to go to that. So I had to undo it from all that tape Ran it out through here. I'll put a little grommet on there at some point, but yeah, I messed up. Um, so I think the power goes directly to the wiper. Then the other wires come off of that and go in to the switch. What I did was rescue my sort of wires from the old harness and it's these two and these three together. And I believe the one single one is the power wire 
and then there's like speed controls from that and then there's uh, the two for the pump itself that sprays it up on the windshield so it's three here two here and I'm just gonna have to figure out how to wire these back up because they were cut out like I should not have done. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's what I'm gonna have to do, figure out how to wire up. But the power will go to one of these and then this, these are the other two speeds, I believe. And then one of them jumps over from this to go to these two and then this controls the pump. Okay, so it just goes to show you should not do what I did, which is just cut everything out to get the harness out of the dash. Uh, the painless kit does not come with any wiring for your wiper motor or your heater slash air conditioning, like factory air conditioning or anything like that. It has one power wire that goes to the wiper motor and one power wire that goes to the heater. And um, I cut those things out and should have saved them. I could have unplugged them and plugged them back in through painless. Anyway, um, I do have a kit on the way for the heater wiring. I do not know how that goes at all. Uh, it's not gonna be here in time for this video. With the wiper motor though, I think I can actually make wiring that will work. Let me show you. Okay, I've got the original plugs back in. It took me a little bit, but you can kind of see that this one was spaced out. I plugged it back in. And this is for the washer pump to spray uh, the windshield wiper fluid. So I know that this yellow and black one is a power wire because it's providing power into the motor. Then it's jumping out and providing power to the pump. This other wire that's up here on the pump would obviously be the one that goes into the switch. And because I know that this one is the power wire that I can connect my painless harness to, that means I either have um, one wire for, so like one on here is probably for the pump. Then there's low speed and high speed. The only thing I have not figured out yet is which is which, but I of course can turn it, you know, get it, everything set back in and fix, turn it on. If it comes on high, then I can switch the two wires. But that lets me know then that this one goes to either high or low and this one goes to either high or low because they're not it's not the power wire that jumps out and into the pump so what i can do is get these three wires together put them you know tape them up run them through my firewall and then directly into the back of my switch okay so my power wire is now officially connected to the harness Power is going into this, and then these are grounds that are coming off that'll go to the switches to either be off, low, or high. So we're just gonna assume my wiper motor will be right about here in this hole. I'm not ready to install it yet because I don't have the ground strap that it requires. Um, unless I can get a decent ground on here. But anyway, um, not ready to install it yet, but I'm gonna run this I've got all the wires taped together and I'm going to run them back through where the blue wires already come out from the fuse box I'll run these three then to the switch got them fed up through there and the wiper switch is approximately here so I just need to finish taping all of this up and then I can attach them to my switch. So like I said, I'm gonna make this sort of lone one my pump. And then, just guessing, that might be high, and that might be low. But anyway, that is my wiper switch. Connectors are on and I didn't waste one. It's so hard to come out and work on the car on a Sunday when there's football games being played on TV right now. Ah. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Now what I need to do is follow my original uh, circuits. Um, so one on here, there's a little tiny, well, you can't see it, but there's a little one right here on the far left. And that is this green wire. So what I'm gonna do is just go down through my list, green wire, dark blue, empty, you know the gray wire brown I don't 
actually have the brown wire I'm not sure what's going on dark green all of that so I can follow my guide here this is 1 through 6 7 through 12 and I've only got 10 and I really only have 9 because the tachometer is counted as 1 but it's actually not part of this because my original gauges were just the warning lights not the rally gauges so really the last thing left once I get I still have some wiring to figure out for lighting but once I do finish the only thing I really need to do is plug that clip back down into the dashboard and then my instrument panel is done what I still need to do as part of my instrument panel wiring dash wiring are the door jam switches I've actually got a new set and again I've torn out the wiring and I shouldn't have um, but um, what happens is there's a wire that's going to be in the tail light section it's this white one and this is going to go to the dome light um, and then on the other side of the dome light it comes out and it runs in to the switch and then the switch acts as a ground so when the door opens it grounds it and then allows power to go to the dome light same thing on this side and so yeah i've i think i may wait until i do the tail section wiring um, i'm not putting this back in yet i still have you know lots of things to do in here um but yeah the, that's one of the things that we're going to want to focus on i may even make a special video on just the um, door jam switch lighting because I haven't seen anything anything out there on it. Again, I'm just going to have to worry. I've got little bulbs I've got to worry about here and here and here. Um, glove box, ashtray, courtesy light. I think I'm done. Look at this. After all the craziness, this is the last thing left down here. And it's just the stuff that goes to the tail light. That's amazing. I am so darn excited. So that's going to do it. Uh, I really am happy uh, to be done with that interior section. Uh, so yeah, if you can, subscribe to the channel. I've got the taillight section coming up, and then we've got to test it out and see what all I got wrong, which I'm sure was a lot. Uh, like the video. If you got anything out of it, I'd appreciate it. And leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, things I got wrong or anything like that. I'd really like that too. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in, and we will catch you next time.